Hello everyone, welcome back to our emergency medicine channel. Today I have come with the topic Digoxin, adding on to our emergency medicine drug series. So let's start. Digoxin is a cardiac glycoside that belongs to the Digitalis class. It is added in the class by antiarrhythmic drug. It has a positive inotropic effect and a negative chronotropic and a chronotropic action. And the use of Digoxin is limited because the drug has a narrow therapeutic index and requires close monitoring. Uh, digoxin can cause many adverse effects. It is involved in multiple drug interactions and can result in toxicity. So let's see today what are its uses, when it is used, what is the dose and what are the adverse effects to be monitored. Uh, so coming to the indication, broadly it is used for atrial fibrillation and flutter rate control. Uh, it is used in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and in supraventricular tachycardias for rate control. Although uh, in case of atrial fibrillation and flutter, it is not considered first line agent for rate control. According to recent AHA, it says that in patient with AF with rapid ventricular response in whom beta blocker and calcium blocker are ineffective and contraindicated, digoxin can be considered for acute rate control either alone or in combination with a beta blocker or calcium channel block. Digoxin should not be administered in case of pre-excitation caused by accessory pathway as digoxin induces AV blockage and may trigger ventricular tachyarrhythmias. It is ineffective in state of high sympathetic activity. In such case, beta blockers are preferred. Next, talking about heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. According to the recent AHA, it tells that in patient with symptomatic heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, despite goal-directed medical therapy, digoxin might be considered to decrease hospitalization for heart failure. Digoxin is not indicated for primary stabilization of patient with acute exacerbation of heart failure. Digoxin may be added during initial therapy of heart failure with severe symptoms or may be only used in patient with persistent symptoms despite guideline directed therapy with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Next coming to supraventricular tachycardia, it can be used in supraventricular tachycardia that is not rate controlled by traditional therapies. Let's see the previous guidelines for the use of digoxin. According to the Brazilian guidelines for atrial fibrillation, uh, it may be combined with beta blocker or calcium channel blocker for better control of ventricular rate which has a class 2 recommendation. Brazilian guidelines for chronic or acute heart failure wherein it can be considered for symptomatic LV dysfunction despite optimal therapy with triple therapy to reduce symptoms and hospitalization and for LV dysfunction in patient with symptomatic AF despite optimized therapy and also to control heart rate in patient with symptomatic AF despite optimized therapy. Next, according to 2014 AHA, it may be considered as a retarder of rapid ventricular response with acute coronary syndrome and AF and severe LV dysfunction and heart failure or hemodynamic instability. According to 2016 ESC, wherein it was recommended for heart rate control in patient with AF with LVEF less than 40% and recommended also for more than 40% along with beta blockers. Next, coming to the dosing, wherein the total digitalizing dose in the intravenous form is total doses 8 to 12 microgram per kg wherein uh, the 50% of the dose is administered over 5 minutes initially and the remaining 50% of the dose is given in 2 doses that is at 4 to 8 hours interval after the initial dose. In case of obese patient, lean body weight is considered for calculating the dose and not to exceed 0 0.75 to 1.5 mg the total initial loading dose. This IV initial dose must be followed by a oral maintenance dose which is 0.125 to 0.25 mg once a day wherein heart failure loading dose is not required and in case of atrial fibrillation and flutter a loading dose is followed by maintenance dose. Patients who are hypokalemic having hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia, hypoxia or hypothyroidism are more sensitive to the effect of digoxin. In that case, the initial loading dose can be given at a lower dose that is 0.75 mg or lesser may be considered. So these are the available formulations. In the form of tablets, it is available in the form of 0.0625 mg, 0.125 mg and 0.25 mg. The most common IV formulation contains 500 microgram per 2 ml. Coming to the initial digitalization by oral dose, wherein rapid oral digitalization can be achieved by giving 0.5 mg initially followed by 0.25 mg every 6th hardly for a total loading dose of 0.75 to 1.5 mg which is again followed by a oral maintenance dose as I told previously. Dose must be adjusted according to the response. It can be guided based on the serum levels. 
wherein the therapeutic range is 1 to 2 microgram per ml. Electrolytes mainly potassium must be checked and normalized before digoxin administration. Coming to the pediatric dose, less than 10 years require a little higher dose that is 10 to 30 microgram per kg loading dose orally followed by 5 to 10 microgram per kg per day maintenance dose orally. Lower doses are required in adolescents and underweight patients wherein more than 10 years 10 microgram per kg loading dose followed by 2 to 5 microgram per kg per day maintenance dose can be given. Next coming to the effect of digoxin how it acts. It increases the force of cardiac contractility by reversibly inhibiting the activity of myocardial sodium potassium ATPase pump. The heart rate slows down due to depression of SA node discharge, slowing of AV nodal conduction, increase in the AV nodal refractory period, indirect vagotonic effect, rapid IV injection causes hypertension and decrease in coronary blood flow. So hence must be kept in mind. The ECG changes what we see is there is prolongation of PR interval, ST segment depression, T wave flattening and QT interval shortening. Digoxin also has mild intrinsic diuretic effect. Based on the condition, in case of heart failure, how it acts, it causes increased inotropy, increased ejection fraction, decreasing the preload and decreasing the pulmonary congestion and edema. In case of atrial fibrillation, it decreases the AV nodal conduction, decreases ventricular rate in atrial flutter and fibrillation. Next, coming to the kinetics of the drug, 50 to 70 percent of the administered dose is excreted unchanged in the urine. Less than 10 percent of the dose undergoes hepatic metabolism. Uh, in case of renal failure, the digoxin dose must be reduced approximately one third to one half in the setting of severe chronic renal insufficiency. In case of loading dose with a creatinine clearance more than 15 ml per minute, no dose adjustment is required and with uh, creatinine clearance less than 15 ml per minute, the dose can be re reduced to 50% of the usual dose and in case of maintenance dose with creatinine clearance more than 60 ml per minute, no dose adjustment is required. In case of creatinine clearance between 45 to 60, 0 0.0625 to 0 0.125 once a day dose can be considered. In case of creatinine clearance between 30 to 45, 0 0.0625 mg once a day can be given and in patient with creatinine clearance less than 30, 0 0.0625 mg must be given every 48 hours or alternative agent can be considered and in case of patient with creatinine clearance less than 15 or on dialysis, alternate agents can be considered. The onset of action occurs 30 minutes to 2 hours after oral ingestion and 15 to 30 minutes after the IV administration. It has an elimination half-life of 1.6 days. In case of renal insufficiency, a reduced loading dose of 3 to 5 microgram per kg is recommended followed by maintenance dose of 0 0.0625 mg every 48 hours. Next coming to the adverse effects, the rate of toxicity increases as the serum digoxin concentration reaches over 2 nanogram per ml that is above the therapeutic range. However, toxicity can occur even at a lower level in the setting of other risk factors such as low body weight, advanced age impaired renal function and hypokalemia. So what are the non-cardiac adverse effects we see? Patient may have anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. May, patient may have visual disturbances in the form of halos, photophobia. Patient may have red-green or yellow-green vision. Patient may have fatigue, weakness. Patient may have confusion, delirium or psychosis. In case of cardiac adverse effects, patient may have ventricular arrhythmias, AV block, atrial arrhythmias and sinus bradycardia. So, ECG must be regularly monitored. Next, coming to the contraindications. The contraindications include WPW syndrome, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, electrolyte imbalances like hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia or hypocalcemia, AV node block, bradycardia, renal failure and thyroid abnormalities, either hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. Hypothyroid leads to delayed drug clearance and hyperthyroid does the opposite. How do we remember this? We remember with the mnemonic weak heart wherein weak stands for WBW syndrome and heart wherein H stands for HOCM and restrictive cardiomyopathy, E stands for electrolyte imbalance, A stands for AV block and bradycardia, R stands for renal failure and T stands for thyroid abnormality. Next coming to the drug interaction, digoxin has numerous drug interactions. I have only covered the important ones and the ones which are more commonly used in emergency department. Clinician must be aware of such drug interaction and monitor for digoxin toxicity. Let's see what are those. Uh, in case of beta blockers, both beta blocker and digoxin both slows AV conduction and decrease heart rate. Must be carefully used when used together. 
Carvedilol elevates digoxin concentration and increases risk of toxicity. Coming to calcium channel blocker, it has the same effect as with beta blocker. Along with that, non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker increases digoxin concentration. Loop and thiazide diuretics cause electrolyte disturbance and predispose to arrhythmia. Potassium sparing diuretics and amiodarone may decrease positive inotropic effect of digoxin and increases the serum digoxin concentration. Sympathomimetic like epinephrine, dopamine, co-administration may increase risk of cardiac arrhythmias. AC inhibitors, co-administration leads to 50% increase in peak digoxin level. Warfarins, it reduces protein binding of digoxin causing increased pre-serum digoxin concentration. So all this must be kept in mind. Next coming to the monitoring, while well, the patient is on uh, digoxin, regularly ECG must be monitored. Electrolytes must be monitored that is potassium, calcium and magnesium. Renal function test must be monitored regularly. Digoxin level must be sent one week after initiation and then thereafter must be monitored or when the doses change. Digoxin effect on ECG is characterized by diffuse scooping of the HC segment which can be seen with therapeutic levels and is not associated with toxicity. In case of toxicity, the most common ECG finding is frequent PVCs. Although the pathognomonic ECG finding is bidirectional ventricular tachycardia. So one must keep this in mind. Next coming to the indication of digoxin immune fab in case of toxicity. Any digoxin related life threatening dysarrhythmias, refractory hyperkalemia, serum digoxin concentration over 15 nanogram per ml at any time or above 10 nanogram per ml 6 hours post ingestion or acute ingestion of 10 mg in adults and 4 mg in children. In chronic elevation of serum digoxin concentration with altered mental status, dysarrhythmias and severe GI symptoms. These are the indication of digoxin immune fab. How do we calculate the dose of it? So the number of vials of digoxin immune fab is equal to digoxin level at steady state into weight of the patient divided by 100. So this is how it is calculated. Empiric dosing of this uh, digoxin immune fab is 10 to 20 vials can be considered in critically ill patient with acute overdose. 6 vials can be given in chronic toxicity for adults and 1 to 2 vials can be given for chronic toxicity in pediatric. In case if digoxin immune fab is not available, then treatment with multidose activated charcoal, atropin, antiarrhythmics like lignocaine and phenytoin must be considered. Cardioversion and pacing may induce dysrhythmias and, and typically not used, but they may be needed in patients without other therapeutic options. Dialysis also may be indicated in patients with acute renal failure and refractory hyperkalemia. So hope this was concise and shall be useful. Thank you.